Accelerators for the environment still highway life extension, so there's a lot of miles of paved roads in the U.S. Most of those are uh, from asphalt. The average road, uh, especially in Illinois, undergoes uh, lots of uh, repairs and repaving every few years. And the U.S. places uh, 550 million tons of hot mix asphalt each year at a cost of about 25 billion a year. So it's a huge industry. And the heavy machinery used to rebuild the highways is, is, has a big part of the footprint. So even a technique that gives you a one-year extension of life of the road would save enormous amounts of diesel fuel and taxpayer dollars each year. So you can think of this as, you know, in an analogy to the way we've talked about radial tires. You irradiate the tire, the, the uh, molecular structure changes, and the asphalt becomes harder. And that's the logic. Now, it's not as trivial as that. You need additives to do this, but I think this is clearly something you can imagine uh, has great power. Again, it relies on the idea that you would need a uh, mobile system. And, uh, you know, we've gone through sort of a, a paper exercise here of uh, how much you need, how fast you can drive, all those kind of things, how much value it brings. And, and uh, so we've started doing some, some uh, real tests in this area to see how hard we can make it. So that's, uh, that's something we've just started. Accelerator technology can be applied to wind turbines, so there are new materials like magnesium diboride, which uh, we refer to as high temperature superconductors. So these are materials that uh, become superconducting at higher temperatures, which are easier to work with. Uh, there's been advances in these materials recently that allow them to have very high current densities, which then allow you to have high magnetic fields. And therefore, you can think about absolutely uh, different uh, approaches to wind turbines. And, and for me, the key thing is they, they don't have gearbox. So it's, they're, they're lighter systems, they're, uh, they're more efficient, and it uh, makes, makes a fair amount of sense. So I think there's another area of uh, we can get into a discussion. So what's the obstacle? So I think the, the main thing is the risk and the high cost of entry. You need a lot of experts, you need a lot of uh, understanding of, of uh, these, uh, I would call them advanced technologies. And so what we've uh, started to do here, which is really a first for Fermilab, so Fermilab goes back to 1968, but I would say this is the first time that we've had a real desire to impact the private sector in what we do. It's the first time the Office of Science within DOE has had a similar attitude. So the, the idea of uh, technology being transferred in a, in a serious way is, is uh, it's got momentum now, I would say. So we have, we have built a, a new facility, which we refer to as IR, so it's the Illinois Accelerator Research Center. It was a joint project between the Department of Energy and the state of Illinois, and it's to enable Fermilab to work more closely with industry and university partners to develop new accelerator technology, demonstrate new applications, support accelerator education, to develop new accelerator technology-based products in high-tech industries in the U.S., and IR is intended to be a portal, portal for industry into the larger core capabilities and infrastructure in the laboratory. So the vision is well aligned with the goals of the DOE Accelerator Stewardship Test Facility Pilot Program, which you're going to hear about from here. So uh, as you drove in, you perhaps saw the building. It's a very nice looking space age uh, type building. Uh, we have a mission. We want to partner with industry to exploit technology developed in the pursuit of science. So it, for us to do world leading science, we have to be at the cutting edge of the technology. That, that's the simple answer to why we push technology so hard is to do our science. We think that that is going to have applications especially in these portable, high-power electronic accelerators. That's really what we're, we're uh, focused on. So in summary, Fermilab is actively engaged in accelerator R&D in support
support of this basic mission. Uh, it's science mission. The technology we develop, we believe, have a, has application for long, uh, beyond HP. That's HEP, that's already true. Opportunities for lab industry university partnerships with transformative impact, manufacturing, energy, and the environment. I give you a few examples. There's opportunities to create new products, new industries. And uh, the DOE is starting this new uh, stewardship program, which we, you know, we, we want to pay attention to and be involved in. And then there's other funding sources within the government that allows us to uh, move these partnerships forward. So Argonne and Formulab look forward to showing you our capabilities. You'll physically see them today and discuss the possibilities for future partnerships. Good evening. Welcome to Fermi Lab. I'm Tom Carter, your host for this evening. Uh, I'd like to tell you about some upcoming shows we have. We have one that's going to be uh, very exciting that's not in the uh, regular schedule. On Sunday, March the 8th at 2.30, um, we're going to have the 